Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take the BS34 carbs uh, from the police bike, which is in repair right now as far as the top end goes. Those videos will be coming out separately. We're gonna uh, essentially split the rack, um, take each carb apart as far as the throttle shaft goes, and we're gonna replace the seals if they're the right ones. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of times you have to do some guessing when it comes to these carbs. It's, it's very difficult sometimes to identify carbs based on numbers. Like for example, on the side of these carbs, it says Y209 and E212. And I, what you do is, first of all, you Google the numbers on the carbs because they never jive uh, you know, directly to like, you know, it's a VM26 or 28 or a BS34 and as far as the bikinis go. Uh, they never do, but sometimes you can find a reference online that you know, indicate, you, at least give you a really strong idea what carbs you have. The other thing to do is just measure them up. Uh, these are 34 mil, so, uh, but we're going to separate them from the rack mainly because we need to get at the throttle shafts. The main work is going to be up front here, the throttle shafts, all right? Got to split the carbs for that. I have new fuel T, uh, new fuel T and new fuel joints coming with O-rings on them, so we're going to put all new joints and T in, and then um, we'll uh, put them back together. So with any carb work, organization is number one. I've gone over this many times before. I got some baggies over here to my left, and I'm going to go ahead and start taking this apart and then bagging things up. These uh, rack screws are usually very tight. Unfortunately, you're not going to get those out usually just by, you know, turning them with a regular screwdriver or a JIS screwdriver even. I'm just trying it. A lot of times you can find a Phillips number three that fits really well. This is a smaller screw up here. And don't let that happen if you can all help it. All right, so the rack will come apart now, but we're gonna start on uh, talking about and working on the fiddly parts. Uh, we don't have to worry about it on the end car because the detents for this um, uh, this enricher arm or enricher linkage, there's only two of them, the two in the middle here. Failed to mention that before. So you got one here and one there. You don't have one over there or there. So we're not gonna have to worry about that till the, the linkage comes past that point when we start taking this carb and that carb off. So we're just gonna work on this one in the end right now. Sometimes there's a set screw in here. Now, if there is, like on the magnet has them, but of course that's a little different. Um, you know, you have to undo that. Otherwise, we're just gonna go ahead and start separating carbs. Watch out for the springs. Uh, we definitely definitely have to think about the um, spring for the, the uh, synchronizer uh, arms here, the linkages where they connect. Okay, so when you take these out, uh, I already covered that you have the two detents right here on this linkage for the enricher. Sometimes there are screws, like set screws, on these parts, but in this particular one there is not. Okay, what, what it is is um, it's got like a, I don't know, some sort of a clip or something that holds it into that arm, otherwise the arm wouldn't be able to pull it. You know, there'd be nothing pulling, there'd be nothing connected to linkage, connecting the linkage to this little arm, in other words. So we're just going to start pulling it apart, and then figure out how we're going to do that. What you're going to have to do here is there's an actual C-clip here. Oh, it flew away, but I got it. What the hell? <laughs> now we can move it. The shaft will move independently, and we should be able to pull this back where the car will it'll give us some room here to do this. There it goes. Now the whole thing just comes off. What I'm gonna do off camera here is I'll just do the same thing. Well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna show you this first though. Is uh, the little detent ball and the spring inside here. So we're gonna have to get the, uh, the, the cable stay out of the way. So I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pull the, um, the C-clip out of there. Hopefully it won't go flying this time. When you get down to the end, you're gonna pull it out. There we go. It didn't fly out luckily, but down inside there, there is a 
uh, spring and a little ball bearing. Like I said, you can just take the whole shaft out. It doesn't matter, you know, do it however you want. This is how I'm choosing to do it though. So that's pretty stuck in there. Even when we flick it. Oh, there it goes. It does come out, see? This is what you gotta do. You gotta play with it a little bit. There, I, I remember doing this. There's a little ball like a BB in there. There it is. All right, yep. So you'll lose these. We'll get a tiny little baggie. I saved the little baggies that small parts come out of when I order jets and things. We'll put those in there and then stick them in the bag. All right, so you've seen me do two of them now. I'm just going to do the other two. Get the uh, choke and richer shaft out of the way completely. Secure the other little ball bearing and spring. And then we'll come back. When I'm going to also take the um, slide uh, covers off and the diaphragms out. The slide vacuum diaphragm slides out. Uh, we're going to need to get them out of the way for an operation when we go to put it back together and we'll go over that at that time. Then we're going to concentrate on the actual throttle shafts themselves, um, get these screws out. This part can be real tricky and um, you just have to kind of use some patience. I have done this a number of times so I don't have any, uh, you know, I don't have any thoughts that I'm not going to be able to do it but it is, um, you know, somewhat tricky. We'll go over it at that time. You notice I didn't number any of the carbs before I took them apart. And like I did on the Valkyrie and other carbs. And that's because it's kind of hard to mess this one up getting them back together. You know, you got to remember that all the uh, enrichers go one way out to the left. This is number one, two, and three, and four. And they're only going to go together one way. In other words, you can't put this one over here and you can't mess them up. And you know that these two with the main throttle and the little cam here where the uh, throttle cables go, go in the middle. So it's kind of hard to mess these up, so that's why I didn't number them. But if you so choose to do that, then definitely, definitely, definitely consider numbering them and using whatever numbering system you want. Just write it on there using a metal tag with a piece of wire like I do when I ultrasonically clean them, that sort of thing. So we're going to start with number four since it's right here anyway. I'll move uh, three, two, and one out of the way and we'll take this one apart. I'm not going to do all four of them anyway. I'm just going to show you one if it works, if the parts are right, and if I don't screw it up. All right, so again, the objective here is to take the butterfly out of the way. So we need to unscrew it, remove the screws, then we need to rotate it, and then we need to carefully grab it with something, like a pair of needle dicks. Needle dicks! With like a, a rag or a little piece of rubber or something on there so we don't damage it. And then we slide it out. Now what I will do is make a note here you see that little number in there? We're just going to make a mental note that that number goes down or upright. Now this is why we took the slide out, because we need access to the back. And the problem with the back on this one, well not the problem, but the problem with those screws are, is those screws are, um, are what do you call it, staked. Uh, in other words, they, somebody reaches down with something supporting the screw on the other side, probably some sort of jig, and stakes it from the center and spreads that out. That, provide, that uh, provides you know positive lock where it doesn't fall out into the motor. That presents us with two challenges though. Number one, getting these out. So you have to be really careful because essentially the threads of this shaft are going to, um, the throttle shaft, are going to clear that because it's a little wider on the back and you have to be really slow and gentle with it. Use a little bit of oil. Number two, we're going to have to redo that with these screws that come in the kit. Assuming they're all the right screws and uh, the right length. And I have done it before. It's a little sketchy setup, but it works. So we'll cover that here in a little bit, hopefully. But right now, what we're going to do is get a little bit of three and one oil on the backside. That's backside. Back, back, backside. Just a tip and just from the backside. And then we'll uh, start working these screws in and out. Better yet, uh, out and in. Because we're going to go back and forth with them a little bit. A little bit of oil on them helps. All right, so are you in shot? Yes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and use a number two JIS screwdriver. Broke them loose, but I think a little oil helps come through. We don't want to damage the threads in the shaft, if at all possible. Here's the two old screws. Let's compare them to the new. That looks about right. So maybe we actually got the right cat. That'd be amazing. Put those up there. Now let me get something where I can grab that. I don't know how easy it's going to come out or not. Maybe we can just pull it out. Oh, it just comes out. Never mind. Sometimes they're stuck. There we go. 
So remember that little number goes down or upright and facing toward the intake. Now we have to do is disengage this little clip right here. There's, um, I don't know what's behind exactly besides the seal of course, but there's some sort of little Teflon washer or, or nylon washer, which probably is gonna, I hope it doesn't break, but it doesn't come in the kit either. There's our clip, a C clip, C clip. I'm gonna put that up here for now. Now before I pull the shaft out, I wanna get an idea just how worn this is, if it is. See that shaft is hardly moving like left to right. I mean, maybe a little bit of wear, but certainly not a lot. Now remember there's spring tension underneath here. We're gonna have to rewind it. You see how this clip comes around there and it secures um, probably where this guy is, this little plug, this little wider piece um, is what captures that spring on the backside. It's kind of hard to see, but it's down in there. So now we're just gonna take the shaft out and there should be, there may or may not, yeah, no, there isn't. Sometimes there's something on the inside. So there's our shaft. Like I said, the board doesn't look so bad. I think those are copper, brass, not copper. I don't know if they're copper or brass or bronze. They may even be bronze. Yeah, I don't know. So, all right. Now the next thing we need to do is simply pop the seal out. But what I want to do is just kind of gently pop. Oh, they come right out. That's right. Now that we don't have any spring tension or anything on it, I want to put it back in. Let's try the other side and really kind of get a good evaluation of how much wear is on here. I mean, it just doesn't feel like that much. I mean, I could set up a jig and measure this, but with an indicator, but it's, I think it's pointless. I mean, it might be two thou of movement, if that, thou and a half maybe. So if we take the long part and put it over here to get a better comparison. Yeah, they're side to side or round to round. These are, these are in fine shape. So I would say that our seals, if, if this was a problem, our seals were the um, culprit. So you wanna keep in mind also how these went in. I failed to mention that before. On these particular seals, you can see that the opening, all right, the opening, here's the, clo here's the, here's the closed part and the open part is toward the outside. So you gotta remember that. And if you forget, just look at another carb once it's apart and then you can double check, or the other side just like I did. But uh, you just gotta keep an idea what, you know, keep appraised of the orientation of these things. So it's gonna end up going in like this, not like this. I don't know why they do it that way, but that's just the way they do it. See, so the closed end is in. All right, so now what I'm gonna do off camera is, um, uh, because the shaft, you said shaft, and the butterfly are out of the way, uh, since I can get at this a little better, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just use a little fine wet or dry, like 800, and just a little bit of WD-40, and excuse me, clean this bore up really well. There's no reason not to do that. Now, that it's really hard to do when the shaft and the butterfly's in, but now that it's not, we'll, Go ahead and clean that up and uh, wipe it out. A little brake clean on a rag. Clean up the um, uh, the area in here, degrease it and stuff, and then we'll be ready to put new seals in, see how they fit on the shafts. I haven't even tried it yet. Obviously, I've been talking to you guys. All right, so we're gonna put the seals and shafts in. I got the one, the shafts, yeah, one sh <laughs> shaft singular. I got the one inner seal pushed in a little W, uh, not WD, a little three in one oil on it. That's all I use really. You put grease on these, I think you're asking for trouble because if it sits for a while, grease is gonna kind of congeal and it's gonna actually make this gummy. So I just like to use a little light oil. And we'll put the other seal in the same way. Remember that little outer part, the outer part of the seal, I should say, the open part goes out. All right, and the spring is going to go between this little boss with a, flanged area which is kind of pressed in there for that purpose so there's a little tang that tang. goes on it and the this not not this one but that one uh, of, of the tang on the actual arm and then it'll wind this up it clocks it up okay so we're gonna just do this and bring it up 
Both seals are in. The spring is engaged. Now we're going to put our little Teflon doodad or whatever that is, plastic on there. Get the circlip going. <clears throat> and the circlip goes right in because it isn't like a real nasty one. And now we're back as far as the throttle operation goes. It feels good, super smooth. There's normally a little bit of play, thrust play. So you don't have to worry about that. Now we're going to go ahead and put our um, <laughs> We're going to put our coin back into the slot, and to do that, we have to remember that when we, when it's in the closed position like this, okay, when it's in this position, um, it has to be with that number facing forward and down. So that means that we are going to clock it this way and shove it this way. And this can get a little tricky because there's a couple tiny little flats on the sides. There we go. Now we're lined up, it's in the bore, the numbers are properly, in the bore properly, the numbers are down and facing forward. Um, now we gotta blast it with a little bit of um, uh, brake clean to clean out those holes. Put the screws in, I'm gonna put some red Loctite on them. And then I'm gonna show you, <laughs> I'm gonna show you the sketchy setup on how I do this to peen those over. Um, whether you choose to do it that way or not is up to you. It'll probably be perfectly fine with just some Loctite, but um, yeah. Um, so anyway, let me clean that up off camera. I'll get it ready to put the screws in. We'll put some Loctite on them and then I'll show you that part. All right, the only Loctite I have right now in red is uh, the Loctite 6020 for time certs, which is pretty damn good stuff. So when you put Loctite on these particular screws, um, you just want to use a tiny, tiny bit. I hope they're the right threads. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Make sure these are dead nuts clean. I've had my freaking beast hands on them, so I want to make sure they're good and clean. All right. Just a touch, and I mean a little bit. Because if you have too much on it, it oozes out and goes down into the uh, sides where the throttle or uh, where the actual shaft goes through the body of the carb, then that's not good. Hey, what do you know? They thread in. Snug it for now. Do the other one and tighten them up. I'm going to let this dry a while. I got a couple of appointments to do. When I come back, we'll film what I'm talking about as far as that sketchy setup for um, peening these over on the back side. Before we do that, we just want to make sure that everything is good. No binding, no nothing. Again, there's going to be a little thrust clearance, but what happens is that butterfly actually takes that up once it's in. Yeah, that's going to be fine. And from the back side, you can see that they are just sticking through. All right, this procedure I'm about to do is not for the faint of heart. So if you have any questions about doing it and you're doing a job like this, just don't do it. Come up with something else or just use the Loctite. It's probably good enough. I've done this before and it is very tricky. The objective to this is to peen the rear side of these screws where they sli slightly penetrate through the shaft while supporting the screw itself. How I do that is I put a uh, extension with a small bit that fits that screw. In this case, it's a number one. Those screws are a little smaller than the old other ones I've seen. And we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna hold this as much as we can on top of that screw. And then we're gonna take a very small punch that's been sharpened and go to the center of that screw which is a small screw and we're going to give it a couple of tappy tap taps tappy 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 tap 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 and just kind of spread out spread out out that screw a little bit on the end of it to make sure that it doesn't back out again this is a tricky procedure and if you don't want to do it or you're concerned about doing it don't do it so i'm going to go ahead and get you set up and that way I have two hands. Well, let me show you the back of the screw first so you can tell the difference once I get done, as soon as, assuming that I don't screw it up. 
what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a screw by just visualizing it as much as possible going on there and it's got to be there straight on the screw all right now we're on the screw because so i can feel it wanting to try to turn it and you got to keep that screw as parallel with this tool that you're using to support it as possible then what we do is we reach down with my other tool and go straight at the center of that screw now that we're there we're going to take our tappy tap tap hammer now tappy tap tap tappy tap tap and we'll do it a couple of times here to kind of push it out i'm just trying to spread out that end of that screw a little bit and that's good that's not going to go anywhere now i'll show you what it looks like if i can that's the one on the right that i did you can kind of see it let me zoom up on it kind of see it's got some dimples on it and it's kind of spread at least on one side there so that that's not going to come out there's no way that's going to be able to unscrew because the head of the screw is kind of smushed over a little bit at least not without force i mean it'll come out with regular tool but you said tool but uh, not with um just vibration or something and i'll double check and when, when you tap these things they will tend to loosen up a little bit even with a loctite but the loctite probably hasn't uh completely set yet so what we want to do is make sure that they're good and tight, good and tight, you know, a German torque spec. And that is, that's, that's still very tight. So I'm confident that we're not going to have any problem with that screw coming out because we have it um, spread out. And I got to do the other one and then this carb will get set aside and I got to do the other three, which of course you won't see because you've already seen one. Okay, folks, here's the BS34s for the KZ1000 police bike all back together, all re-racked and uh, nice and clean functioning properly open and close is nice these are buttery smooth and i bench synchronized them as you saw if you watched the valkyrie video with the little five thou feeler gauge that actually came with that kit so um, i had really no problem with this now i want to clarify one thing when i took this apart as you can see in this video i decided to pull the carbs off from the right to the left off the choke shaft here the enricher shaft and i said it earlier in this video i said just do it the way you want well, that, the reason why I did that was I could honestly not remember if these balls were going to go flying at me when I pulled this shaft out, this rod, okay? But I can tell you right now with, with all certainty, you're probably going to want to take this out before you start unracking these carbs. If it has one of these uh, enricher uh, activator linkages or rods that is indwelling in the carb, in other words, not um, uh, cable actuated, okay? And the reason why is it just gets it out of your way, and these things are not going to fly out at you. Those little ball bearings are actually recessed down into the lower hole uh, where the spring goes quite a bit, and they only stick up a little bit to articulate with the grooves that are machined or turned into this shaft, okay? So I can't keep this up. I know the feeling. And, uh, you know, that way it, um, you know, it just, it just detents it uh, where it needs to be, okay? So I would recommend, again, when you're going to take these apart, one of the first things you do before you loosen the screws is go ahead and remove these C-clips. Take this bracket off first, of course. Get these C-clips out on the little linkages that articulate between the shaft and the choke plungers, okay? And then th that allows these guys to move independently. And then just carefully pull it out and just watch it when you get to these two holes. Uh, once you clear the rod, then you can get in there and tappy-tap or use a, well, I don't think a magnet will work. They're stainless. But you'll get the ball bearings out, then just use a little piece of wire, uh, you know, like a piece of wire like, um, like this. And then you reach in there and pull that spring out and then, um, then put them in a small baggie, like I said. That way it just gets it out of your way and cleans up the top here. So again, I did it because I just didn't know what, it was, what the result was going to be if I pulled it out ahead of time because I just couldn't remember. I've taken these apart before like this, but it's been a really long time, so I just couldn't remember. So as you can see on the other side, we've got the new fuel T. The aluminum, this is, I, I didn't mention this, this is um, metal, you know, aluminum fuel T's and aluminum fuel joints. And uh, nice solid feel. Each one of these has two O-rings on each side of it, so it's double stacked, you know. Double stacked, sounds like a cookie. And uh, so these things are not gonna leak, but I have not pressure tested this yet, I just haven't had a chance. So pretty soon I'm gonna flip it over, run a pressure test on it, you see me do that a hundred times. So I don't need to cover it now. And then um, 
will be good as long as that pressure test is valid. All right. So I just wanted to show you the end product and the final result. All right, guys, that's it. BS34 carbs, installing new shaft seals in for the throttles, taking those butterflies out, putting those new screws back in, loctiting them, peening them over the backside, and make sure they won't come out while the engine's running. That would be a bad thing. So this, again, is a tricky procedure, but I've done it before, and I'm pretty good at aligning all that stuff up and getting it peened over like that, and I'm confident those two screws at least won't come out. I hope you enjoy all these videos. If you did, make sure that you like, um, share, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell. You get notified when I put more of this stuff up. Till next time, thanks for watching. Catch you on next video.